Before we can use our item list object here, our container for the data, we need to put some data in it. Now, it's going to be empty right now because we're initializing it. We don't have any screens or any way to add data, but for the process of the development here and debugging, we're just going to add some data here, as we mentioned in the previous video. So what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do is say, okay, now's a good time to create our add item function, right? We're going to use this in the application at some point. May as well go ahead and create it now because it's going to be pretty straightforward and pretty simple. And then we'll use that to pipe in our dummy data and we get to test that that add item function is working properly. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add here and we're going to say, okay, so we're going to need to pass in some data here. So I'm going to say this is going to be a new item and it's going to be of type item. Okay. It's going to be this one here, this item, this struct. So we're going to pass in a new instance of this, right? With an item name, it's going to have a name and a date, right? Item name, item date. So that's what we're going to do. And by doing this, it helps us debug because we've typed it to item as well. In here, it's going to be very straightforward. As I said, it's an, we're using an array up here, right? We've created this item list, which is, we've told it's going to be an array of item. So perfect, that's going to work. I'm going to say item list, and we are going to append our new item, right? That's it. Very simple, very straightforward function there. So let's get rid of this print statement. We know this is working. Let's go ahead now and create just two or three, you know, dummy item pieces of data here so that we can go ahead and start working with that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create again. These are just for debugging purposes, so it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Let item one equal a new item, right? And it's going to be like I say, we're going to go in here. It's going to fill in for us. We want this one here where we're going to need an item name and an item date. So we're just going to call this item one. And for the date, I'm just going to put the date right now. Okay. Just going to save myself here some copying. I'm just going to do this, copy and paste. So we're going to create three items there. Okay. Just change those. I'm going to put in, there's going to be like a, such a fractional difference here that we're just never going to see it. But trust me, it would put the live date in date time stamp for each one. Okay, ignore this because it's saying we haven't used them yet. Fine, we're about to do that. Okay, so and I'm doing this very, like I say, very verbose because it's just debugging data, right? This is nothing fancy here. We're just going to call that add item function, pass in add item one. We're just going to repeat this again with item two and of course with item three. Like I say, no, no amazing, um, you know, programming skills, no ninja skills going on here. Very verbose. Of course, you, you know, you could do this many different ways, but I just created three and added them to the array. Okay, while we're here, we might as well go ahead and complete this class because there's just one remaining function to take care of, which is going to be when we call the get item list. Unsurprisingly, all we need to do here is return our item list. Okay, we're just going to throw back the the contents here. We just say, look, here it is. Here's the contents of that. Now, there's a couple of things got to take care of here. First of all, we now need to tell it, all right, we're going to return something. I'm going to return an array of item, right? It's going to be an array of item. That's basically we're saying, look, this thing up here, I'm going to return it down there, and we've typed it. Okay, so again to help with the debugging. So, I'm just going to save that. This class is complete. Let's go over to our content view. Now, how are we going to use that here? Well, what we need to do here is we need to go up in the struct, make a little space here for us. So we now need to say, hey, that environment object that was created, we want to go ahead and use that, please. And the way you do that is we're going to say at observed object. So a property wrapper type that subscribes to an observable object and invalidates a view whenever the observable object changes. What does that mean? Well, you may recall that as we set up here, I'm just going to go back here. The environment object where we set this up is an instance of the item list. 
the item list has this published property and that is also remember why we made this conform to observable object because we want to use it so we're going to go over here right and now we need to say hey you know that thing about when the view is invalidated we want you to re-render with the absolute latest data this is where we hook up the data to this view so add observed object and i'm just going to give it a name i'm just going to call it the item list that i'm going to use here and it is going to be the item list okay just going to save that let's go back over this again just quickly so we've created up we've created we said look this is an observed object here this this variable is an observed object of the item list class swift under the hood is going to say oh yep yeah, i know all about this you told me about the environment object so i'm not going to create a new instance of this i'm going to go ahead and provide you access to the environment object that you've created now let's go down here and test this fantastic now right now as you run it it's not going to work it's not going to look any different because if i go ahead and run it here we've hooked up this data but now we need to change our views to use that data okay so item one you know still getting the hard-coded data on the view here okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to delete this because we only need one instance now because we're going to hook in some dynamic data and we're going to make a couple of little changes here so now instead of this being a navigation link i'm just going to what i'll do is just so we can have this as reference just going to comment that out and I'm going to add a list view. Okay. We're going to list each of the items in that array that we're using. So we'll just complete that there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to say for each and it's going to be the item list. So for each item in the item list, and here we're going to call the function get item list. So we're going to get that array, right? So for each item in that array that we're getting back from our function call over here, where we return, okay? Hope that makes sense. We're returning the array. So for each one of those, what I want you to do, we're telling it, I'd like you to go through and now render a row for me, please. Now, there's one extra property we have to add here because each row needs to have an, a Swift UI has, has a, a unique identifier for each item on the screen. And of course, with our list here, we need to identify each one so we know which one we're tapping on, right? Because we want to send the correct data to the next screen. And the easiest way to do that is to give it an ID. And we're just going to do this, all right? It's so a backslash dot self. And that's going to satisfy that need. And I'm just going to add in now. There we go. I've got a closure in there. And I need to add a couple of extra properties. And let me make this a little bigger here so you can see it. Try and get it on one row. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to say, hey, uh, okay, item row. I'm going to give it a name, item row in. All right. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to just copy this because we're going to take advantage of this. And in, in this list here now, I'm just going to uncomment this. And that's, that's why I kept this around because we're going to have our comment. We're going to have our navigation link be the rows, each of the rows for our display here. You'll see in a second. Just going to save that. Got an error that I need to fix here. And I'm actually missing an item. There we go. Now, let me re-indent this. I'm going to do control I to re-indent. Perfect. Okay. So now you can see I've got item one, item two, and item three. But now this label is wrong, right? Because it's just saying item row for, you know, item one for each of the three items, right? And you're probably sitting there thinking, well, how do I know that it's, you know, really rendering out my data? Great question. What we need to do now is be putting in the dynamic name, right? We need to change this so that we're using the actual name of each of the items. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this string and we actually now have access to the name for each of those items because of the work that we've done here with item row. What I can do is I'm just going to put in here 
item row dot and you're going to see that it's going to you know it's going to help us out here in Xcode and say hey you got that item name property yeah perfect that's the one we want and then as soon as I do that look at that item one item two and item three now you may be thinking hang on a minute Peter how do I know that you, this is really going to change as my data source changes how do I know this is truly working with the environment and observed object well I'm going to show you I'm going to save that Let's go back over to the item list and I'm just going to temporarily comment out number three and save it. So now back here on the content view, you can see that I've got item one and item two. Sometimes Xcode can be a bit weird about this with these previews and you may find this preview doesn't update properly. What you can do is on the menu in Xcode, you can go up to product and you're going to see this clean build folder and sometimes clearing that out can help solve this problem. Once you do that, it'll ask you to resume the view and if you resume the view you should then see this updated here but you can see this using item 1 and item 2 I'm going to go back to the list here let's just uncomment those so we've got three items I'm going to save it again go back to content view ask it to resume go up to product and clean build folder resume again and now we've got our three items back. Fantastic. So there's just a little bit of caching of data going on there. So that's what we've got here. But now we have a problem. Let's go ahead and run this and you'll see what the problem's going to be. So we've got our dynamic naming here, item one, item two, item three. We've got the list being dynamic with the quantity of items based on the array. But every time I click on one, we're still seeing the hard coded details view. And now we need to go ahead and fix that up using the dynamic data from our data source as well. And to do that, we also need to make sure we're telling the details view which of these items we're clicking on. So let's go ahead and stop that. And we're going to do that in the next video.